In Sage 100, user-defined tables can be used to filter user-defined fields. Today, we're going to walk through the steps to create a user-defined table in Sage 100, create a user-defined field, or UDF, and apply the table to filter the UDF. Then we'll add the user-defined field to the screen. The user-defined fields can be used to store additional table like little Excel spreadsheets, but they're very popular for validating user-defined fields. My name is Carol Sukup and I'm with Ruckus Blum Computer Consulting. So in Sage 100, if you go into Custom Office, User-Defined Field and Table Maintenance, it gives you a list of modules. So you'll select the module that you want to work with. Today, we're going to create a list of campaigns for the sales order. So we'll um, create the name of the table as the campaign list. And we can edit the description to show the list. And the field length is very important since we're using it to filter a user-defined field that's six characters. We want to make sure that the key field of our table is also six characters. So once we create the key field for this list of campaigns, we can create other columns in the table as well. So for example, if we want a lengthy description, then we would create a key field for the description as well. And maybe we want this to be 20 characters long and we'll have a caption on the description. Marketing would also like us to um, track the cost for the, uh, for the campaign. And so we're creating a numeric field for the cost and we'll just add the description for that as well on the caption. And then marketing is also telling us that they'd like us to track the start date for when the campaign started. So we'll add the date in there as well. So we can have a variety of different types of fields once we've created all the fields, then what we do is we say OK, and this is going to add the user defined table to Sage 100. And it actually creates a data table and puts it in the sales order module to be used for additional filtering, reporting. You can add the table by itself. It's like a little Excel spreadsheet into an area within Sage, or you can use it as a filter like we will be today. So now that we have our table, what we want to do is change the order of the grid entry because we can control the, um, the order of the columns. And the key field is always first. So then we have the description, the date, and the cost. And maybe marketing wants us to um, enter the cost first. They want it in that order. So we can rearrange the order. Now let's add the, the data. So you can have a short code with a lengthy description. So maybe one of our campaigns is the catalog and this cost $5,000. It started at the beginning of November. So we can track whatever information you want on this. The, um, the fields don't necessarily have to be uh, used. For example, walk-in orders don't have any cost, so we will skip that and leave that blank. Or maybe we have phone-in orders also. And so again, with the description, it can be very lengthy and the code can be very short. So once you finish entering all of the data that you want to enter, then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, this this would be one place where we can add the data in the user defined field and table maintenance. The other place would be to actually add it to the desktop. The security does apply to that so that the users can go outside of user defined field and table maintenance in order to update it. That way you don't have to kick anyone out in order to modify the table. So the next thing we want to do is add our user defined field. So we'll go in, we'll choose the sales order module, and then we find the correct table. You can call us for help locating the table that you need, or you can check the data files. Uh, there's lots of good uh, details in there. Today, we're going to add our table to the sales order header because we're going to give a list of campaigns for each order. 
And so the other user defined fields that you may have created in the past show up. We're going to add a field for campaign. It doesn't have to be the same name as our user defined table. That's merely a coincidence. This is one that the first time you created its manual entry, business objects are used if you're flowing one field to other areas within the system. So we're going to leave that as a multi-line field. It's going to have a lookup because of the validation that we're adding. And the key, the campaign is a six character field. Now with the validation, you could add a range, you could list the values, but if you list the values through here, everyone has to be out of the system at that time. With the table, you can edit it without being out of the system. So we choose our campaign to validate and filter our user defined field. So we'll say okay. And then when we say okay, it is going to add that new user defined field to the tables within Sage. And these can be used to report and filter um, as well as validate. They do embed themselves right into the tables and can be used to flow to history. So that's the reason since it's modifying the tables that everyone has to be out of related tables while you're updating that. So once this finishes, then what we're going to do is add it to the screen so that you can see how the validation works. And there's two ways to add a user-defined field to the screen. One of the ways is to use the customizer selection, and the other one is to just use the shortcut of Control F9 in order to go right into the customizer to modify the screen. So you're going to see that next. Um, so we could add our user-defined field to the screen as well as other fields. So when I go to the place that I want to add my user-defined field, I hold down Control F9 and that gets us into the customizer. We can either modify an existing table or modify this table itself. It defaults to myself as a user. I could say all users. You can also select a grouping for a customization group that is defined at the role at the user maintenance. So you can define it for a group of people. You could also modify it for all companies or just the specific company. So we're going to modify just for me and the specific company. Now, the first thing that you do is select the button for adding a field, and then you go to find the slot where you want to add it and just draw in that field. It'll default to showing you a list of all the user-defined fields that you've created in the past. If you select show all, it can show all the fields that are available in any of the tables or the related tables in case there's a piece of data that you'd like to show on the screen that's not the field. But we're going to select that user-defined field that we created. And this is modifying it to a height of one because it's a lookup. So that added it to the campaign. We'll save that and exit, and then save and exit again. Okay, so now that we've modified our screen, let's go into that order and see what that looks like. So we'll create our next order and select our customer, and then they might have a PO, and we get to our campaign field. I didn't set it as a tab stop. So then we hit the lookup and can choose which of the campaigns apply. So that was the conclusion of today's presentation, where we are adding a user-defined table to filter the user-defined field. And then we added that user-defined field to the screen. Thank you very much. This is Carol Sukup with Ruckus Blum Computer Consulting. Please contact me if you would like any additional information.